Welcome to day 23 of the 25 apps in 25 days series. The daily series where I show off a brand new app every single day for 25 days in a row. And can you believe we've only got two days to go after this one? If you missed any of the previous episodes, I've linked a playlist down below where you can catch up. But for today's episode, we're taking a look at yet another free and open source app, which levels up your phone's privacy because it lets you turn on or off certain privacy features depending on whether your phone is locked. As always, just a reminder that this video and this series does not have any sponsors, but it is supported by those of you who download and use any of my apps, as well as those who purchase any of the products that I sell on my website, all of which will be linked below. And I do want to quickly highlight the companion app to this series, my app shelf, which is a library of handpicked app recommendations from me. We literally add brand new app recommendations every single day, so it's definitely worth checking out. But with that being said, let's dive into day 23's application. Okay, so day 23's app is called Privacy Flip. And as I said, this one is also free and open source. And so as such, it's available via FDroid, which as always, I will have linked below. Now to get the app to work, you will need to first get the Shizuku app up and running. And you can do this via the wireless debugging method that I showcased on day six of this series, but that relies on your phone's Wi-Fi being switched on, which Privacy Flip might actually change on that later. So a more reliable method is to set up Shizuku via your computer, which I demoed how to do on day nine. So I'll link that video up in the cards in case you need to get that set up yourself. But once done with privacy flip open, I'll tap here and then allow all the time to grant the app access to Shizuku. Then I'll tap allow again to let the app run continuously in the background. And that's it. We're now into the app's main interface and we can now dial in what we want the app to do. So as I said, the app basically lets us automate all of these privacy related features to either be on or off, depending on whether our phone is locked or unlocked. And by default, you'll actually see that it disables all of these features. So our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth, our mobile data, our location, our NFC, and even our camera and microphone. And so if we leave these settings as default, all of these features will actually get completely switched off when we lock our phone. Now, because I've actually currently got Shizuku running via the wireless debugging method, all I'm gonna do is toggle off the Wi-Fi option because otherwise Shizuku will completely stop working when I lock the phone, meaning Privacy Flip will also stop working. But then I'll also toggle on these Bluetooth location and NFC toggles here so that everything gets reactivated when I unlock my phone. But that is literally it. I can now lock my phone and swipe into my quick settings panel. And there you go, everything is off just as expected. Then if I get out of that and unlock, then quickly reopen my quick settings panel, all of those features get turned back on pretty much immediately. Now, obviously for someone like me, it's a little extreme to have all of these features turn off every single time that I lock my phone, but I can see a very real scenario being to leave the location and NFC features disabled when locked, especially the NFC one to avoid any accidental phone taps. And so even for that alone, this app is perfect. The only other settings that we can tweak is the time delays down here. So in other words, how long it takes for the various features to get blocked and unblocked after locking and unlocking. So you could bring both all the way down to zero seconds if you like. And again, check this out. I'll go ahead and lock my phone. And as I said, the app also blocks our camera and microphone. So when I go to launch the camera app, there we go, it's been blocked. And if I come over to video mode and press record, there's our pop-up showing us that the microphone has indeed been blocked as well. The only issue that I had at the time I filmed this video was that sometimes the camera and microphone didn't get automatically unblocked after unlocking. So hopefully that's just a minor bug that can be ironed out sometime soon. The only other thing that I reckon the developer should consider adding at some point in the future is some sort of additional automations where perhaps the app could automatically switch itself on if it's not connected to your home Wi-Fi or you're outside a certain location proximity. But even without those features, it's still a super useful app that I'm sure you'll agree has the potential to seriously level up your privacy. And just like that, day 23 is complete and somehow we have only got two more days to go. As always, don't forget to check out my app shelf for even more great app recommendations. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on those final two episodes. But aside from that, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.